UFC 297 goes down Saturday night at Scotia Bank Arena in T DOT. That's in Toronto for you people who aren't hip. Sean Strickland and Dreykus Duplessis are on the main card. And for all you betters out there, it's time to hit the books with Eric Richter, betting analyst for the New York Post. And you know it's official because he's got the shirt on and he's got the guns out. What? Who wants what? Yeah, <laughs> New York Post, UFC 297 style. Uh, Eric, man, the people are ready to uh, spend some money this weekend, so let's help them out with the main card, Strickland, Duplessis. What bet do you like? Yeah, I mean, we're not spending money. We're making money out here. Mm. And we got we got Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis. I'm going to tell you right now, right off the rip, we're looking at Drickus Duplessis here. We're looking to bet him. He is way bigger than Sean Strickland. And just skill for skill, we're looking at, you know, a five-to-one skill advantage. Drickus is a way better striker. He's got way more technical aspects of his game. He has way better power. Now, the only thing that people have been saying about Sean Strickland is like, oh, he's got the dirty boxing. He's got, and you see him right there, he's always, he's always uh, walking you down. He's always trying to get in your face yeah i think that he's gonna have a little bit of trouble there doing that against drickus duplessis duplessis got way more power in his strikes i think he's gonna get you know i mean look at that strike on darren till there uh you know he's he's got way more power in his strikes he's got um you know he's just a, he's a little bit better technically in terms of like landing his power strikes he's got kicks the low leg kick would really uh halt strickland's ability to come forward and i think that duplessis could also mix in some grappling he's the bigger fighter give me duplessis he was an underdog at the start of the week sharp money has been coming in on him so it's about even money right now um exclusive sny uh same game parlay um here from DraftKings. the fight to start round three and duplessis money line is plus 310 that is my bet of the week and that is my exclusive bet here on sny that's how we get exclusive here sny new york post ufc 297 watching some of those punches and that cauliflower ear bro i'm so glad that i'm on tv and i don't have to fight to make money uh <laughs> another fight that's on the main card neil magny fighting mike mallet what books do you want to hit on that one yeah, so I mean, we got Neil Magny here. This is the old dog versus the new dog, right? This yeah. is uh, this is the old versus new. The you know trying to pass the old guard, and you know for me, I, Neil Magny's you know at this point he's really just a gatekeeper. He separates the contenders from the contenders from the pretenders, right? Shavkat Rachmanov fought him. Now Shavkat's gonna be fighting for the title here real soon. Uh, Rachmanov won. Ian Gary won. He'll probably fight for a title soon. But then you get Daniel Rodriguez, right? Daniel Rodriguez fought Neil Magny. And Neil Magny won. Daniel Rodriguez is never gonna fight for a title now. That's just kind of how it goes in this in this game. Uh, Mallet minus four hundred favorite. No one's really expecting Magny to win here, and I don't blame him. You know, I was doing some some really deep research. Right? I was looking at a fight from twenty fourteen in the World Series of Fighting, a minor league organization that no longer exists. Mallet fought Hakeem Dawadu um, back in the day. This is a long time ago. Mallet was actually TKO'd by a, by Dawadu in that twenty fourteen fight. You know, since then he's gotten better. He's put on a lot more weight. You know, he fights at welterweight one seventy now. And you know, for me, I, it really comes down to level of competition. Magny is, like I said, he's fought the elite of the elite. Mallet's never been there. And as a minus 400 favorite with that step up in competition, I think it's really hard to look at Mallet, even even at the submission odds, which are plus 100. I'm really looking at Magny here, not on the money line. Now, it's a little bit of a different bet here. Um, you know, Magny plus three and a half on a point spread in MMA. I know no one's ever heard of this, but basically what would happen here is if Magny loses by decision at uh, 30 to 27 or better, you win. So if he loses decision 30-26, you lose. 30-27 and better, so a win, or 29-28, you win. Um, if he gets submitted, he loses. But I don't think that Mal is going to be able to get Magny down to the to, down to the down to the down to the mat. I don't think he's going to be able to get down to his mat as easy as people think. I think that those submission odds are ridiculous, and I think that's a huge step up for Mal in competition. He is not an A-list blue chip prospect. Uh, you know, I, I think that Magny plus three and a half. Um, at plus 195 is great value on DraftKings. Um, and I think that that is what you should be targeting in this fight uh, specifically. My man just gave you an SNY exclusive and a whole algorithm on a bet within the bet within the bet. I'm still sitting here with the question marks over my head. But, hey, he does the research. He shows you the guns. You get the green. Uh, Eric, thanks for hopping on with us, my man. Show the guns one more time for the people. Hey. <laughs>